Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about the mechanism of fatigue related to low blood sugar or reactive hypoglycemia. So let's get right into it. In order to understand how low blood sugar works, you have to understand normal physiology first. So when we look at normal physiology, when you eat during the day, you will utilize some of the glucose for energy and then you will also store your glucose in the form of glycogen in the liver as well as skeletal muscle tissue. Now, glycogen makes up 5-6% to 6 of the weight of the liver, which is about 1.5 kilograms. So, glycogen stores in the liver is about 100-120 to 120 grams right, of glycogen. When you go into a sleep state, Glycogen needs to be converted back to glucose for utilization for your bodily functions, right? Your brain need, is still active, um, your liver is detoxing, so you need uh, proper glucose stores. While you sleep, you use up 70% of your glycogen stores. So it has to be utilized during that sleep cycle, 70%. With hypoglycemia, because of insulin spikes or people with poor diets and skipping meals, it creates a lack of glycogen stores. So let's get right into the mechanism of hypoglycemia or reactive hypoglycemia. So when we have fatigue with reactive hypoglycemia, those patients are typically women, thin-framed, what we call skinny fat, right? They're thin, but they don't have a lot of muscle tissue. They miss meals during the day, right? And they'll just kind of like drink coffee or just have a donut, right? And then they have inadequate glucose for the production of glycogen synthesis. So they don't have enough glycogen stores uh, built up during the day. When they go into their sleep cycle, they lack enough glu uh, glycogen they don't have enough glycogen stores in the skeletal muscles as well as through the liver and then decrease glucose to the brain because the body is utilizing your glycogen stores when you sleep causes a stress response so the fact that you don't have enough glycogen and enough glucose for bodily functions while you're sleeping it causes a stress response with the stress response, you have an increase in epinephrine and norepinephrine. That will increase your sympathetic drive, your fight or flight system. So it'll wake you, out, wake you up out of a deep sleep just because you have lack of glycogen and now you have epinephrine or norepinephrine going up and then now you're in a sympathetic state, you get up wide awake. I can't fall asleep again. Usually we'll wake up two or three in the morning and can't go back to sleep for an hour or two hours, right? It's because you don't have enough glycogen stores to sustain the blood sugar throughout the night. You awaken and you can't go back to sleep. That's one of the classic signs of low blood sugar um, uh, during the day. So if you can't sleep, what is it going to cause? It's going to cause fatigue the next morning. You don't have enough cortisol awakening in the morning to get going. So you get up and you drink a big cup of coffee just to get going. Or you have to like move for your cortisol to go up. So we have issues. So how do we prevent this, right? You have to prevent a decrease in blood sugar. During the day, you have to eat small meals throughout the day. Healthy meals, meaning fats, proteins, and, and carbohydrates in the form of veggies with fiber. You have to maintain that blood sugar. We don't want this up and down in your mood. We don't want this up and down in your energy level because you eat or you don't eat. So you have to eat small meals throughout the day in order to level off that blood sugar, right? And you can't have sugary stuff to do that. You must avoid insulin spikes. So you can't have a donut, a muffin, and coffee right because all that does is it spikes your insulin 
and you drop your blood sugar again so you go this up and down throughout the day in terms of your sugar dysregulation you have to be able to stabilize that blood sugar throughout the day you must make enough glycogen store you have to have enough glycogen in the liver and in the muscle tissue before you go to bed it takes time your body needs to adapt to this so you have to avoid refined sugars carbohydrates and then you have to focus on uh, lean protein high quality fats uh, plenty of vegetables as a matter of fact I would recommend maybe uh, an avocado slice with turkey um, organic turkey literally like 30 minutes before bed just to build up that glycogen store so you don't wake up in the middle of the night so you have to do all three things in order to get stabilized so these are the patients we don't want to start with intermittent fasting or ketogenic diets right off the bat you have to stabilize their blood sugar first before you move on to a ketogenic diet or fasting with these types of patients you have to be able to stabilize that blood sugar first get them into a good sleep cycle and not wake up in the middle of the night then we can consider longer term uh, fasting and uh, uh, ketogenic diets okay my name is dr jen sung where clinical excellence meets excellent results and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side have an awesome day